America is back. America is back. Diplomacy is back at the center of our foreign policy. These were the words of President Joe Biden when he first took office. It was supposed to be a sign of hope and a sign of changing things. Well, the things have changed in the past few days and not for the better. It's another Sunday. You know what that means. It is time to take it slow. Well, we're trying a different format this week. Unless you've been living under a rock, you would be aware of the situation in Kabul, Afghanistan, the condition of the people there, the panic, the chaos in Afghanistan. So we thought, why not take a look at how we got here? What is the history of Taliban in Afghanistan and how the change in stance of a select few in power affects thousands of life on the ground? As we speak, Taliban has taken over Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan. We've been treated to horrible scenes like these. People hanging on to airplanes, trying to get out of the country in whatever way they find possible. People are just hanging on to the doors of the airplanes which have been shut. You can see people falling to the ground from the sky. When you hang yourself to the side of an airplane which is about to take off, you know that the chances of your survival are negligible. But if you still choose to do so, rather than stay on the ground and face whatever is happening, tells you how unlikely they feel their survival is going to be. But what happened? How did we get here? In the last couple of months, you might have heard or read that the US is contemplating pulling out the troops that have been stationed in Afghanistan for the last 20 years. There have been a number of analysis, a number of experts who've said that it might take Taliban around three to four months to take back control of Afghanistan. Well, it took a week. There was no resistance from the army. Maybe they didn't have morale to fight the Taliban. Maybe they were deflated. Over the last week or so, the US President Joe Biden has received a lot of flack for his decision to pull out the troops from Afghanistan, thus sort of leaving the entire country to fend for themselves. While Joe Biden is being blamed for it squarely by a certain section of the media, this was not his decision. You might want to go back in time in 2020 when the president was someone you might have heard of, Donald Trump. He started the conversation with the Taliban to pull out the US military from Afghanistan should they choose to distance themselves or should they commit to distance themselves from terrorist forces such as Al-Qaeda. Such a nice group of people, na, Taliban. They'll always stick to their word. So this has been in the works for a while now. The treaty or the agreement had been signed that the troops will be pulled out by the 1st of May. It was widely expected that Joe Biden was going to override this treaty and uh, would take some more time to think about it. He was also questioned quite a bit by his own press about the decision to go forward with this extraction of the US troops. This was his response. Do I trust the Taliban? No. But I trust the capacity of the Afghan military, who is better trained, better equipped, and more, re more competent in terms of conducting war. Well, probably to his surprise, but no one else's, the Afghanistan forces did not stand up to the Taliban when they cornered Kabul. There are a number of theories flying around that the Taliban people texted or messaged the Afghanistan army that they will be spared their lives should they choose to surrender. Their sitting president within one week, he absconded. In a Facebook message, he said that he fled to avoid bloodshed, but it reeks of corruption, it reeks of cowardice. The people who are suffering eventually are the common people in the state of Kabul in Afghanistan. Was Joe Biden right in calling the troops out? Was he wrong? Should they have left the troops so long? There is no right answer to this. The only thing for certain is that the chaos that we are seeing in Kabul can please no one. So on the Taking It Slow podcast today, I will try and recap the journey of how did Afghanistan or Kabul reach this stage. And Afghanistan, which was a very, very liberal state not too long back. So Afghanistan has been called as the graveyard of empires for a very long time. A number of external forces have tried to come in and conquer or rule Afghanistan. In the 19th century, the British came did not succeed. In the 20th century, the Soviet Union came, did not succeed. 
in the 21st century, the US have been there for the last 20 years and they are now going back. To understand the issue of the Taliban versus Afghanistan and the internal politics of Afghanistan and how we reached here, let's take a step back to 1979. In 1979, Afghanistan was being ruled by President Noor Mohammad Taraghi. He was a very liberal president, believed in welfare, believed in merit over religion. In fact, he was so pro-science, pro-development that he made some controversial statements as well like you come back to Afghanistan one year later and you'll find the mosques empty. Now, obviously, there is a large section in Afghanistan which is very, very pro-Islam and is very, very conservative as well. These kinds of statements obviously did not go down well with that section of the society and uh, President Noor Muhammad Taraki was brutally murdered by his successor called Hafizullah Amin. Now, Hafizullah Amin was a very, very pro-Islam president who, who dialed back on all the reforms that President Taraki had tried to inflict. Interestingly, this was also the time when the Cold War between the USA and the Soviet Union was going on. Now, in the Cold War, both of them had allies, but there were a few countries who had declared themselves as non-aligned. India was one of these countries. Uh, Afghanistan was also one of these countries. So when there was this political turmoil in Afghanistan, the Soviet Union felt that this was a perfect time to, for them to step in and probably gain the support of Afghanistan towards the communist side. So they stepped in, also replaced Hafizullah Amin, and then tilted Afghanistan towards the communist side to sort of have an advantage over USA in the Cold War. Now, their new representative brought in a lot of changes. They released a lot of political prisoners. They, they liberalized the country quite a bit. They promised free election, the right to protest, a number of things like right to religion, right to choose your religion, etc. Now, the USA woke up. They realized that Afghanistan is slightly tilting its allegiances towards the communist state of Soviet Union. The USA, having realized that the Soviet Union had stepped in and taken advantage of the political turmoil in Afghanistan and uh, shifted the balance of power slightly towards the communist side, tried to gain leverage by causing unrest in the settled political scenario. They had to respect the political power that was shifting towards the Soviet Union. They did that through something called Operation Cyclone. Through Operation Cyclone, the CIA started funding the Mujahideen in Afghanistan just to cause unrest. They gave fundings of up to 3 billion US dollars just for them to create disorder. There have been a number of pictures that have circulated of then President Ronald Reagan meeting with the members of Mujahideen, uh, which just goes to show that they were simply trying to cause unrest in the political landscape. They kept on providing funding, they kept on providing weapons to the Mujahideen with the sole aim of disturbing the peace in the land, disturbing the settlement that the Soviet Union was trying to establish. This went on for quite a few years and finally had its effect. The Soviet Union agreed to remove their forces from Afghanistan on the condition that the US stopped supplying the Mujahideen with funds and with weapons. In 1989, the Soviet Union finally withdrew their forces from Afghanistan. After the forces were removed, a fresh set of elections happened and Dr. Mohammad Najibullah came to power. Now, Dr. Najibullah was a good guy. He tried to bring peace to the land. He tried to appease the extremists as well. But USA, being the dickheads that they are, they still continued supplying arms to the Mujahideen. This led to a civil war and eventually, in 1992, the Mujahideen won the civil war, murdered Dr. Najibullah and they took control of the country. Now, all was not well within the Mujahideen as well because the Mujahideen themselves were a collection of a number of different ethnicities. They did not realize but already trouble was brewing amongst themselves in the form of Taliban. Now, what is the Taliban? Quite literally, Taliban translates to students. Now, this organization led by Mullah Umar, a name you might be quite familiar with, overthrew the elected Islamic head from the Mujahideen. Thus began the first rule of Taliban in Afghanistan. The Taliban was a much more extreme version of the Mujahideen. Uh, in, in their diktat, these were a few things that they banned. They banned cinema, TV, music, VCR, photography, embroidery on sleeves. The men could not clean shave. They banned foreigners. 
they banned un offices they banned ngos they banned the internet they banned education for girls above 10 years old no prizes for guessing the people were not happy now off and on it is said that the us created the taliban well they did not create it literally but a practical implication of their actions was the creation of taliban they did create the mujahideen and a subset of that mujahideen were the taliban so not literally but practically yes the us created their own worst enemy the taliban now since there was a lot of unrest in the people there was something called as the northern alliance which tried to form a united front and take on the taliban there was a big battle in 2001 the northern alliance lost the war two days after they lost the war this happened the 911 happened the biggest terrorist attack that the world had seen so far a terrorist attack that would change the world as we know it the man who took responsibility for this terrorist attack was none other than osama bin laden to retaliate and avenge the 911 attacks the us sent troops to afghanistan in 2001 the troops were on ground in afghanistan as i said goes 20 years back through their might through their force they pushed the taliban out of power fresh elections happened and a new president was elected his name was hamid karzai they elected a new constitution they conducted elections they made afghanistan a democratic republic the us troops continued to stay there to support the democratically elected government in 2011 we heard the news that osama bin laden was killed the primary purpose for the us troops to be down there in afghanistan was to avenge the attacks which was accomplished the troops still did not leave in the last decade or so we have seen the resurgence of taliban there were a number of bomb blasts in smaller areas killing a small section of people so these things these incidents have continued to occur the taliban has not been eradicated completely but it had been pushed out of power now as you might understand it is extremely difficult to maintain a large army in another country it is very expensive as well if we look purely at the numbers the us has spent almost 2 trillion dollars on this war 500 billion on interest 87 billion to train the afghan military and police 24 billion on economic developments and 10 billion on counter aeronautics it has been an expensive endeavor so in 2020 when donald trump was president surprisingly he initiated a negotiation with the taliban themselves taliban and the us government signed a deal to end the 18 year old war and remove all the presence of the us troops from the afghan soil by may 1st if the taliban vowed to not align themselves with terrorist organizations such as al qaeda as soon as the us troops were withdrawn recently we saw horrific images like these taliban has now completely taken over the capital city of kabul the us president joe biden was asked was questioned about his actions and he had this I to say i stand squarely behind my decision after 20 years i've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw us forces american troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves interesting choice of words he mentions that the us troops should not fight a war that the afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves what was the us's motive behind sending troops to afghanistan in the first place was it to avenge the 911 but that was done in 2011 why have they still been there was it to eradicate taliban completely the taliban are stronger than ever right now why leave now was it to develop a country well that clearly hasn't happened there is no right or wrong side in this argument you can make valid arguments for the us to stay further and ensure at this time of need at the crunch hour when the taliban are at their strongest us troops should have been there to support the democratic government you can also make arguments that this step should have been taken ages ago unfortunately the people who suffer are the people who are on ground now the taliban spokes people have come out and said that they have changed now they will give rights to women they'll be tolerant they'll be benevolent but really if history has taught us anything we can't really take taliban at their word 
all that we can hope is that a solution to this is found sooner rather than later maybe the un steps in and the people who are being affected by this the most the people who are suffering on the ground their pain is eased a bit that was this week's episode tried a new format this time around do give us your feedback if you like this kind of content uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new here and hit that like button it really helps us get found in the algorithms until next time keep taking it slow